my mother's parenting philosophy can be summed up in one word, fear. Fear of the outside world and all the evil people in it. When I left ha the house as a teenager, it wasn't, be home by 10, I love you. It was, remember, Ted Bundy is a handsome man. As if that's all I needed to get through life unscathed. When my oldest son was born, I made a decision that I didn't want them to come home and be scared like I was. I didn't want them to come home and check behind the shower curtain looking for Norman Bates. I didn't want my boys to have the encyclopedic knowledge of serial killers that I was raised on. I was tired of being scared of the boogeyman and I didn't want them to be scared too. So I plowed right into motherhood pretending to be brave. I tried not to worry about bumps in the night or strange cars on the block. I stopped watching and reading about true crime and all the horrors that could happen in the world on a day weekly basis. I ignored my mother when she told me to be careful when I took my son to the grocery store because he was cute. As Because evidently there were kidnappers hanging out in the cereal aisle who didn't want no ugly kids. Before I knew it, my son was two and a half years old and one night he spiked a fever, a high one, 103. We called the doctor and we gave him some Tylenol and by the next morning he was fine. Then it happened again the next night. Same fever, same Tylenol, same normal morning. We went to the pediatrician who just said he just had a virus. Yet it kept happening. We went to the ER and the doctor there just pretty much wrote us off as over anxious parents. I told myself, it's just a virus. Don't be silly. He'll be fine, there's nothing to be afraid of. My son isn't on the back of a milk carton. Then my son stopped walking because his legs hurt. My husband rushed him to the peds doctor again, and this time we got the wizened doctor who was just near retirement and had seen it all in her years. Karsten, my son, had to go to the hospital now. She would call ahead so they were ready for us. I met my husband there, and for the first time in my life, I was afraid really afraid. The pediatric cardiologist explained to us that Karsten had something called Kawasaki's disease, not to be confused with the Japanese motorcycle. There was no definitive test, but the treatment was to suppress his immune system for the next 16 hours and give him high doses of aspirin. However, if for some reason it wasn't Kawasaki's, he would likely develop Rye syndrome and have brain damage. But if it was Kawasaki's and we did nothing, he could die from heart damage. I remember being angry. This wasn't some scary person trying to lure my son into a windowless van with candy. This was something I hadn't thought to be fearful of. My mother hadn't warned me that sometimes the danger is something is invisible and it sneaks into your life without you even knowing. The risk from bad guys and criminals can be mitigated, somewhat mitigated with security systems and behavior changes, but this couldn't. When we, we asked the cardiologist, the cardiologist if he was confident about his decision, I remember my husband asking if he could be wrong, and I remember the cardiologist saying simply, I could, but I'm not. So we went ahead with the aspirin. And within 24 hours, it was clear that the, the cardiologist was right. There was no more fever and Karsten felt better than he had felt in two weeks. His immune system would be compromised for the next year and he'd require yearly echocardiograms and a stress test when he was 10 to see if there was any lingering heart damage. We got lucky. He's 14 now and all the tests have been normal. I try to be brave as I try to raise my boys. I, however, I don't focus on the fear. I know that fear is being part of being a mom and I try not to fight it. I try and manage it. I still watch too many crime shows on TV and listen to too many true crime podcasts. I still sometimes look behind the shower curtain when I'm home alone at night. I still look in the back seat when I get in the car. And that way, I will always be my mother's daughter. Yet my sons don't do that. So maybe I'm doing something.